Hello, my name is Alex Isles and welcome to Howick on the Northumberland coast. And in today's episode, I'm going to be talking about the Storiger Slide. Now the Storiger Slide is an historical event that occurred around about 6,175 BC, plus or minus 25 years. And this was an apocalyptic event for the people of Doggerland, the east coast of Britain and Norway. So what occurred was there was a huge ice glacier or ice sheet stretching over northern Canada. It was a continental sized ice sheet and it melted during the Mesolithic period because there were higher world temperatures and the ice proceeded to melt. As the ice melted you had a gigantic lake in this area and that lake had a small ice wall which was stopping it from pouring it to, into the Atlantic Ocean. But what occurred was there was a crack in the ice wall and the water broke through and flooded into the Atlantic Ocean. When it flooded into the Atlantic Ocean, it had a huge effect on the world because it cooled the North Atlantic Ocean. And when it cooled the North Atlantic Ocean, the temperature dropped in Greenland, or at least the air temperature, to two degrees Celsius. So that was a huge effect. Across the world, world sea levels rose by one meter because of this huge amount of water that had poured in. Now across on the coast of Norway was the Storiger Ridge. And when you have the Storiger Ridge, it was a massive uh, valley in the North Sea. When it was a massive valley in the North Sea, the new cold water suddenly hits the stone. And when it hits the stone, the cold water makes the stone brittle. And so that caused the stone to become more and more brittle. And when it became brittle, there was a landslide. And this massive landslide caused for a huge amount of material to slide down into this valley in the North Sea. This displaced huge amounts of water and caused tsunamis. The tsunami spread out in all directions, but the landslide was continuing and there were multiple landslides causing for multiple tsunamis to come out. When the tsunami hit Norway, it was 10 meters high and then it traveled across the North Sea and hit into the east coast of Britain. And when it hit into the east coast of Britain, it was three to six meters high and slammed in at insane speeds and then was followed up by subsequent tsunamis. When it rushed across the North Sea and hit Doggerland, the low-lying areas of Doggerland were obliterated. And even the Dogger Hill, or the, the actual Dogger Bank itself, which was only three meters above sea level in the modern age, you know, it was hit by this, tidal, uh, this tsunami and it would have obliterated what was ever on the top of that area as well. It, uh, funnily enough, actually protected the east southeast corner of what is today England. And so that wasn't hit as badly, or at least we don't see the effect of the tsunami in those areas. Up here at Howick, when a tsunami comes in, they've actually drilled down and done a core into the land and they've discovered a 45 centimeter thick deposit layer in the ground from this event made of um, very fine sand and pebbles which would have been picked up off the coast of Norway and then subsequent tsunamis would have just basically pebble dashed it into the coastline. Trees and uh, any sort of livestock in this area would have been obliterated and destroyed by the tsunami and then on top of that as well what makes it even worse is the fact that there were repetitive tsunamis over and over again so if anyone had survived they would need to get out of there very quickly before the next tsunami hit in again causing for the landscape to be entirely destroyed when this occurred this also alongside it um, and in estuaries and in salt marshes and places like that, the tsunami would have traveled up for a distance of up to 20 to 30 miles in some places. So that would have again damaged any sort of Mesolithic communities living along the rivers and they would have also been destroyed. Survivors would have had a huge psychological effect, especially let's say if they were migratory or uh, they were moving from one place to another. And let's say you wintered down in Doggerland and in the summer you came across into the British Isles. Well, then suddenly your winter lands are gone. They've been destroyed. And what we see then is rising sea levels after this event slowly destroy the Doggerland area and people are forced to stay in the British Isles or on mainland Europe. And so that would have had a huge effect psychologically on those people. Maybe they pushed away from living down on the coast anymore. They avoided that because of the huge effect of seeing all of your land destroyed by the water. 
and so that would have transformed the way that those Mesolithic communities lived and maybe they lived more on the higher grounds now further away from the coast to protect themselves but you can see how a knock-on effect of the climate changing in that period causing for the ice sheets to melt rises in global water and sea level combined with colder water hitting onto rocks and causing for an underground landslide which then transformed the way that the north of Europe looked by obliterating coastlines but alongside that as well destroying Doggerland and also wiping out entire communities who live down on this coastline. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video and you've learned something about this event that transformed the world. If you have done and if you're not already, please do subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, like the video, and if you would like to, be in, uh, like to you can support me on Patreon, and then by supporting me on Patreon, you can actually help steer the way the channel produces content in the future and suggest videos for me to create. In the meantime though, stay safe and well, and thank you very much.